perfect. another session of coding. I'm Brenda Smith, a TA for Code Crew, and today I'll be giving you an overview about today's session. Today's session is about exploring the Scratch platform and seeing what's possible with blocks. By the end of this session, you will have an understanding of what blocks do and how they work together to animate your sprites. Let's get started with some important concepts. During this session, we are going to be learning and working on how to experiment with code fearlessly, along with exploring and discovering new skill sets. This session will go as follows. We will go over the new vocabulary words, see a virtual reality demonstration. We will then begin the main activity, which is make Scratch the Cat do something amazing. We'll take a short break to learn about a local organization called Like Mythics. After that, we'll finish up the main activity, then show you a short unplugged activity you can do at home without any technology. Now let's jump into the vocabulary words. First up are blocks. Blocks are a piece of code that you put together to create something. Projects. Projects in Scratch are the workplace you use to create your code. Studio. Studio collects and organizes the projects online. Reflection prompt. Reflection prompt is an opportunity to think about the outcome of your project. Part of the reflection prompt are three colors, red, what is something that doesn't work or could be improved? Yellow, what is something that's confusing and could be done differently? Green, what is something that works well or you really like a project project? All right, everybody. So uh, thank you so much to Brittany for introducing today's episode and letting us know what to expect. Uh, next up, we have a really cool demonstration of virtual reality that was done by Audrey Willis, who is uh, one of the co-founders of Code Crew. All right, so she's going to show us around um, a couple different things um, that she's done in VR with the Oculus. <laughs>
so it is time for us to dig into the the main activity for today um, which is we are going to be working with scratch the cat again so uh, if you remember from last time scratch the cat is kind of the main character in the scratch platform uh, so we're gonna see kind of what we can do with scratch the cat what we can make him do all right so um, if you have not joined our class, I encourage you to do that. Um, so we have our own Code Crew TV class on the Scratch website. Um, so if you go to this link here, um, or if you use the QR code, um, it will take you to our sign up page. And then you can um, click on get started. You can make your own username and password here. Um, and then you'll be able to join our class. Uh, and the great thing about joining our class is that it will make it easy for you to share all of the cool stuff that you make with the other people who are creating along with us. And, um, and I'll be able to see it. Everybody else at Code Crew will be able to see it. Uh, and we might even, uh, show it off on the show, which would be really neat. So, um, but I'm not going to go through with this because I don't actually need to join our class. Um, I'm going to sign in as me. All right. So once you sign in and once you have joined our class and there are instructions, if you need more detailed instructions on how to do it, um, we went through that, uh, on the last episode. Uh, and there's also a how-to on our codecrew.tv website. So, uh, so what we're going to do today is we are going to uh, work with blocks to create a new project in Scratch um, to make Scratch the Cat do something surprising. All right. So um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a new project. So we're going to go to create here. All right, so this is what it looks like when you create a brand new project. So if you remember last time, uh, we didn't start from a brand new project. We didn't start fresh. We were actually working with a, um, a starter project. So we, uh, we remixed that starter project to add our own spin to it. Uh, but this time we're going to start fresh. All right, so what I want you to do is kind of uh, take a look around and explore what there is here on the Scratch platform, all right? So these things over here, these are our blocks, all right? So a block is just, uh, it's like a piece of instruction that we can give our code. Um, and we're working with our friend Scratch here, all right? Uh, so I really, you can follow along with me as I explore, or you can do your own thing. Um, this is really just about checking, uh, checking out the platform, seeing what's available and, uh, and trying things out. All right. So a big part of learning through Scratch is to explore and experience, uh, and just try things out. You know, it's really, there's nothing that you can't undo in Scratch, which is really nice. Um, so you can be kind of fearless with what you try and not worry too much about breaking things or, um, or ruining things or anything like that. So, uh, so let's take a look. We'll do a tour here of all of the different types of blocks on the left hand side. So we have motion. So we can see that we can tell Scratch to move a certain number of steps. We can tell Scratch to turn a certain number of degrees. Um, so we can say go to a specific location or even a random location. Uh, we've got lots of options. We could make Scratch bounce off the edges. So the edges would be the sides of our little canvas right here. Uh, so it looks like there's lots of options if we want to make Scratch move. Uh, so now we have looks. So I, uh, this is like stuff that shows up on the screen, stuff that we're looking at. All right, so we can make Scratch say things or think things. So this kind of reminds me of graphic novels or comic books where, you know, you can kind of add a speech bubble or a thought bubble 
uh, to make it look like the character is saying or thinking something, which is really neat. Um, here we have sounds. So, uh, so my understanding of how the sounds work is that each sprite, so recall that a sprite is a graphical character on the screen uh, that we can control the look and behavior of with our code. So, uh, so each sprite uh, has its own uh, like built-in sounds um, that we can associate with it. So you can see that scratch meows. All right, but we can also record sound, which is cool. Uh, and then we can also um, uh, we can also look at their library of sounds. And we'll take a look at that in a little bit. Uh, we can look at their library of sounds and use that instead. So, you know, in theory, we could make Scratch sound like pretty much anything we wanted to. Um, Scratch is not limited to meowing. So then we have events. All right. So we've talked a little bit about events before. So an event is just something that happens. Um, it can either be triggered by uh, the user doing something. So the user is the person who's actually using your program. Uh, so an event can be triggered by that. It can be triggered by a certain amount of time. Um, we can see uh, that we can listen for keyboard events right here. So like uh, we can listen for the space bar, the up arrow, the down arrow. All right, we can say when someone clicks on our sprite, do something specific. We can even say like when the loudness of a sound gets to a certain point to do something special. Uh, there are lots and lots of different events that we can kind of key into here. All right, control is, this is where, uh, where we kind of get into the logic of our program. Uh, so we can tell things to, uh, to happen after a certain amount of time. That's what wait does. Uh, we can uh, we can tell things to repeat over and over uh, a certain number of times, or we can uh, tell it to repeat forever. Um, we can ask questions with our code. So uh, anytime you need your code to ask a question, um, you're going to use an if, right? So if you need to know, um, you know, let's say we have three scratch the cats on the screen. Uh, when you need to know how many there are, you can say if there are three scratch the cats, then do something. Um, all right. So, and we can also, we can also say uh, to do a specific thing when someone clicks on the, the green go flag right here, which is cool. All right, we go to sensing. So sensing, uh, that it detects when two things interact. Uh, so it can either detect when two sprites interact or when uh, when the user interacts with a sprite or another object on screen in some way. Um, so we can say, uh, you know, if scratch the cat is touching the mouse pointer, do something. Um, so sensing is all about just uh, detecting different interactions on the screen. All right, operators, you will recognize a lot of these from math, of course. We've got plus, minus, multiplication, division. So this does not look like a division symbol that you might have learned in school. Uh, but when we are talking about code, we use this forward slash to indicate division. Um, so it's kind of like a, uh, like a fraction in the way that it looks. Um, so we have greater than, less than, and equal to. These are comparisons right here. So this will check to see if one thing on the left is bigger than th the thing on the right. Uh, this checks to see if the thing on the left is smaller than the thing on the right. And this one checks to see if the thing on the left is exactly the same as the thing on the right. So sometimes we need to check and see if more than one thing is true or false. All right, that's where and, or, and not come into play. So this is when we want to get a little more sophisticated with the questions that we're asking. Um, all right, and let's take a look at variables. So a variable is a placeholder 
for a piece of information. Uh, so if you think back to last time, uh, in the previous episode, we worked with a variable called score because we needed to know how many times we were able to catch uh, the item that was on the screen, right? So a variable can store any kind of information, really. Um, and then we can change that value, that information that it's storing as we go along. So um, last time, uh, when we created our chaser game, we used this block right here. So we set our score initially to zero because when you first start the game, uh, you haven't caught anything, right? Uh, but then as we go, we needed to change our score variable by one uh, each time we caught up with the, uh, the item that we were chasing. Um, so that's what I mean when I say a variable stores information, but then that information can also change. So in that case, we were increasing or incrementing the value of our variable as we went along. Uh, and so, and we can either show or hide that variable from the viewer. So with our score variable, we wanted uh, the user to be able to see the score variable so that they knew how many points they had gotten. Um, but there may be variables that we use in the future that the user doesn't need to see, and we can always hide those if we want to. All right, and finally, we can actually make our own blocks. All right, uh, and we're not gonna get to this yet, but this is a really powerful feature um, where you can customize blocks to do what you want them to do, which is pretty cool. So we're gonna start and we are going to, uh, we're gonna try to make Scratch do some stuff. All right, so let's start with motion and see what our options are. So what happens if I just say move 10 steps? All right, so what I did, I clicked move 10 steps and I dragged it over here. Uh, and if you're on a mobile device, uh, so you may be like tapping and dragging over, that should work just as fine. Um, so let's see, my expectation, uh, so when I'm testing, I always think about, well, what do I expect this to do? Uh, so I expect Scratch the Cat to move 10 steps forward now. Uh, in order to test that theory, I'm going to click on my green go flag. All right, so I've clicked on my green go flag and nothing has happened, which is interesting. So uh, so remember how I said that, uh, that we can listen for the user to click on the green go flag? I think that's what we need to do here. So we need to check and see if somebody clicked on that, and when that happens, we're going to move 10 steps, all right? So um, so this is an event that takes place, and when that event takes place, we're gonna do something. So let's test this again. So I'm going to hit my green go flag, and so once again, my expectation is when I hit go, Scratch is going to move 10 steps. So let's see. Okay, pretty good. So 10 steps doesn't look very far, right? Um, so I'm gonna think about like what went right with what we just did and what could be better with what we just did. So uh, Scratch did move, but it looks like steps uh, are really tiny uh, measurements. So let's see what happens if we change this to 100 steps? All right, so now we're getting a sense for how big a step is in Scratch Land, okay? So one thing that I'm noticing, what happens if I hit stop? So nothing happens if I hit stop. Um, so if I hit go again, Scratch just keeps moving to the right. And pretty soon, if I hit this again, he's going to be almost off the screen. So it looks like Scratch won't totally go off the screen. Um, but this maybe is not exactly what we want. So my expectation 
uh, was that Scratch would kind of go back to where Scratch started and then move 100 steps from there. Um, so in order to do that, I think we need to give Scratch a specific instruction to go back to where he started and then move 100 steps from there. So we need to put an instruction uh, before move 100 steps. So let's see how we can do that. Uh, let's go back to motion and let's see what we can do. So we have our move, we have our turn. Now we have go to. All right, so we have go to random position, but we don't want him to start from a random position because that could be anywhere. All right, I mean, let's kind of test that and see what happens. So, there we go. So he's, he's starting from a random position and then moving 100 steps from there, which, you know, depending on what you had in mind, this could be exactly what you want. But I kind of want Scratch to move predictably, all right? Uh, and that's not what we're getting right here. So let's, let's try something else. So instead of random position, oh, so we've got some more options here. So we can click on mouse pointer and Scratch will go to where the, wherever the mouse pointer is and then move 100 steps. So that's an interesting idea. So let's hit go. Oh, but the limitation here is that this happens when we click on the green flag. So our mouse is pretty much always going to be in the same position. So this isn't really going to lead to uh, any interesting interactions from scratch. So I think what we want, I think that we want to take, uh, we want to take scratch and rather than going to the mouse pointer. So let me show you how to uh, throw out this middle block. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to detach anything that's underneath it and then we can get rid of this because otherwise if I had just grabbed the go to and put it over here it would have gotten rid of both of those uh both of those blocks which I don't want all right so I'm going to move this down here get rid of the go to and I want this go to instead so this is going to allow me to define exactly where I want Scratch to start from, all right? So let me put that there. And let's see, so I want Scratch to show up right in the middle, all right? So, and I can see when I drag Scratch around, it shows me these X and Y values right here. So, uh, so many of you may know from your math classes what X and Y mean. Um, if you have not encountered that before, um, so X is the distance from the left side. So we measure X across this way. And Y is measured up and down like that. All right. So my guess, so right now it's saying that X is at four and Y is at eight. My guess is that the very center of this is where Y equals zero or x equals zero and y equals zero. All right, so we can see that he kind of adjusted a little bit um, and it looks like it, it looks like that was correct. Okay. So um, so what we want to do now is we know where the middle is. We, we know where scratch started. So now we can say go to x is zero and go to y is zero. All right, so now Scratch is going to do the same thing every time we start. So, so now we have figured out how to make Scratch move predictably. All right, that's pretty nifty. So let's see what these turn blocks do. So let me drag this out. So let's say that I want... Um, I want to turn 15 degrees after Scratch moves 100 steps. So let's see what that gives us. All right. Okay. So one thing that I'm not getting 
is I kind of want to see Scratch moving, right? He just kind of appears at his new location, but I want to see him move from where he begins to where he ends up. And that's where I think that this glide uh, position, or I'm sorry, this glide block comes into place. So I'm going to replace this move with a glide block. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to remove my move and replace my turn block where it was. Okay. So, uh, so it says glide one second to, uh, X equals 100 and Y equals zero. And this happens to be exactly what we want because when we moved scratch, um, 100, uh, 100 steps before his Y position stayed at zero cause he only moved to the right. Uh, but the X started, uh, I'm sorry, the X ended up at 100. So this is pretty much exactly what we want. So let's hit go. And my expectation is that Scratch will start in the middle and then over the course of one second, he will uh, move to the right 100 steps. All right, and that's what we got. Uh, and then after that, uh, it looks like we did get our, um, our 15 degree turn. All right. So we are going to pause here for just a moment because it's time for us to learn about an organization here in Memphis that is serving the community and offering some really cool opportunities to, uh, to the youth here in Memphis um, so that they can get mentorship on all sorts of really amazing things like technology, uh, starting your own business, entrepreneurship, um, so they do awesome things here in Memphis and they actually have some, uh, some events coming up that, uh, that you will be able to, uh, to partake in. I think the best part that I liked about Light was all the resources that they had. Like they were able to take us to places where we would never usually go. And also they were able to help us interact more with people who we never would have any chances of meeting otherwise without being in this program. So they really just gave us a lot of resources to draw on to make our ideas happen. Light Memphis works with students in a 16 week program teaching 21st century skills to create wealth. Through a pipeline of support, students are empowered to close the racial wealth gap by becoming entrepreneurs and securing high wage jobs. Students are given a budget throughout the program and the opportunity to compete for extra funding at our pitch night. Once students have completed the finalist program, Light Memphis continues to work with them throughout college, helping with internship opportunities and career readiness. Visit us at lightmemphis.org apply to apply through our online form. Light is a program that gives like financial resources and just like help to into developing somebody's nonprofit. Like they're giving their ideas like really life and helping them make it happen. Light gave me a ton of self-confidence. Like I was very insecure because I have a stutter. So I was very insecure about speaking in public and just making myself be seen in a public area or whatever. And so being a part of Light, I've learned like I have value within myself. And like there are people out there who value me and what I have to say. And so Light helped me realize that. To see the great work our finalists have done this semester and to learn more about Light, Sign up to attend our virtual pitch night on May 21st at 5 p.m. Central Time. We'll be showcasing our current finalists amazing startup ideas. The audience gets the chance to text to vote for the top three students to win thousands of dollars in additional funding for their ventures. We are also partnering with Choose 901 for a pitch contest and would love to see your entry today. 
Any high schooler that lives or attends school in Shelby County is invited to submit a short video explaining an idea you have to make Memphis better. The top three students will receive Choose 901 gear and the winning student will receive a $150 Visa gift card, $100 worth of Choose 901 gear, and a featured blog post on their website and social media. This contest is meant to be a fun brain exercise, so use your creativity. I feel like there's a lot of good ideas in Memphis, like there's a lot of potential in Memphis for greatness, but there's not a lot of execution, and LIGHT is a program that helps us execute those things that need to be done in Memphis and all around the area. All right, welcome back everybody. Um, I hope you enjoyed learning about Light Memphis and I hope you're excited about the possibilities um, that they offer. Um, there's some really cool stuff that you can plug yourselves into and we will include links to, uh, to everything that they talked about in the video on our website, which is codecrew.tv. Um, and you can also access uh, codecrew.tv by going to the um, the little QR code that is in the, the corner over there. So just scan that with your phone and it'll take you to codecrew.tv. Uh, okay, so we were going to continue our exploration of what the Scratch platform has to offer. Uh, so remember, there really are no rules. So you can follow along with what I'm doing um, or if you have other ideas, you want to try other stuff, uh, you are more than welcome to do that too. Um, I would encourage you to, no matter what you do while you're watching, I would encourage you to, you know, build on that once we're finished and, uh, just kind of stretch yourself, see what you can do. Um, there really are, uh, not many limits to what we can do here in this platform. So uh, up until now, uh, we have gotten Scratch the Cat to move in a predictable manner, um, which may be useful to you uh, for what you have in mind. Uh, you may want to do something totally different. Um, I'm kind of curious, uh, you know, could we get Scratch the Cat to follow where the mouse goes? Because um, sometimes that can be interesting. So let's see how we would do this. So we want the uh, we want to pay attention to when the mouse is being moved. So we probably want to uh, to listen to one of our events um, because remember an event is uh, either when uh, the user interacts with your program in some way. Um, or it can be triggered by time or by two uh, sprites interacting with each other. Um, so let's take a look and see what we have available in here. So we have uh, when the go flag is clicked, we have when the space key is pressed, when this sprite is clicked, when the backdrop switches, when loudness is greater than 10, when I receive a message. So these are interesting because it's like we can broadcast some kind of message, um, which is like we're broadcasting our own custom event uh, that's taking place. Um, and then all the sprites can kind of respond to that custom event. Uh, let's see, so I'm not seeing what I want, which is... Uh, da, 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 da. I'm looking for something that has to do with the mouse control, which I'm not really seeing. Let's see, loudness, timer, when I receive messages. So I'm not seeing exactly what I want, but that's okay. Sensing, maybe something in sensing. So, mouse pointer. Um, okay, so this right here, this is kind of what I'm interested in. So mouse X and mouse Y. So, uh, so one thing that I want to point out is if you have an idea, uh, and you're not quite sure how to make it work, uh, 
just kind of get creative and look at what's available. Uh, because the first place you look may not have exactly what you have in mind. Um, so, you know, but as we kept going through the different things here, um, so we see we have mouse X and mouse Y. Uh, so we, we found something that might let us do what we have in mind. So what I want to do is I want Scratch to follow the mouse around. So right now, Scratch just kind of moves independently and then doesn't do anything. But it would be cool if Scratch would um, follow the mouse. So let's see. I want to set Scratch's position to, uh, to the same position as the mouse. So I think that's going to have to do with uh, motion for Scratch. So let's see. We have go to X and Y. So this will allow us to set a, uh, a position for Scratch because that's what we used right here uh, when we had Scratch return to the um, to the beginning or to the, the center of the screen. Um, and I think for the X and the Y, instead of, uh, typing in numbers, I think what I can do is I can grab these values right here and I can put the, uh, mouse X there and the mouse Y there. So what I'm going to do, uh, so we experimented with these first three blocks and they weren't, I mean, we got them to do uh, what we wanted them to do, but now let's try something different. So let's see what happens when we just run this code right here, okay? So I'm gonna run this and we can see that Scratch came uh, right up here where the mouse is, but when I move the mouse over here, uh, Scratch is not following me. Uh, and I think the reason that that's happening is that we only gave Scratch this instruction once. All right, we said when that button is clicked, when that green flag is clicked, do this thing and then you're done for the day. Um, so I think what we need to do is we need to tell Scratch to, to keep doing that, to keep listening. All right, so um, I believe under control, we're going to find our repeat blocks. Um, so repeat would let us, uh, so this repeat block would let us do it um, a certain number of times. Um, but let's see what happens if we make it happen forever. So I'm going to move this over here into my forever block, and I'm gonna snap the forever onto my when. All right, so let's see what this does. So I'm going to hit go, and now, so now Scratch is following me around, which is really cool. Uh, so this could come in handy. Like, let's say uh, I want to create a game uh, similar to uh, what we made last time, which was that chaser game. Um, but rather than uh, control it with, let's say that I want to... Let's see, I wanna catch something with Scratch. So let's add another sprite. So I'm gonna do that by clicking on this right here and I can, uh, this expands, right? So I can upload a sprite, I could actually create um, my own sprite. If I were an artist, I could draw something uh, and then upload it. Um, I'm not an artist, so. Um, so I'm not going to do that. I am interested uh, in what happens if I hit surprise. All right. So when you hit surprise, they choose a random, um, a random sprite for you. And we got this little hedgehog, which I think is adorable. So, uh, so I want to make, uh, I want to make something happen when we, uh, when we collide with our friend, the hedgehog. So let's see how we can do that so we need to uh we need to detect when these two things are touching which if i look at my categories over here it's probably going to fall under sensing all right so i'm going to look at sensing and i'm going to say so right now uh 
so it's telling us that we are controlling our hedgehog sprite. Okay. So we want to say, um, we want to find out if our hedgehog sprite is touching our uh, scratch the cat sprite. So let's see what we have here. All right, we do have options. We do have options. So this touching block is what we're interested in it. And they're giving us a visual hint with the shape of this block that this block by itself isn't going to do anything for us. All right, this block is intended to, uh, to fit into something else. And usually when we see this shape, all right, with this, these little like pointy things on the side, that indicates that it's going to go inside of a uh, control. All right, so we're asking a question. We're asking, is this hedgehog touching um, the scratch sprite? So we know that we need an if anytime we're going to ask a question with our code. So I'm going to fit that right in here. So if our, um, so if our hedgehog touches, uh, scratch the cat, uh, let's make something happen. So let's, let's do a backdrop. All right. We'll, we'll change the backdrop and we change that by, uh, by going right over here. So I'm going to do a surprise backdrop. Okay, and we got an amazing surprise backdrop. This is incredible. Um, okay, so uh, so we have an amazing an amazing stage that we're working with here. And I'm gonna stop this for just a second because I want to be able to control the location of my hedgehog because I think it's pretty clear that our friend the hedgehog needs to stand on the center stage right there. All right, so we just needed to get that right. So, um, but we don't want this backdrop to show up until Scratch the Cat uh, gets to our hedgehog. So let's see, how do I make this backdrop? So what we're gonna do is we are going to set this backdrop one, which is just our blank backdrop, as the first backdrop that we start with. And then once our, uh, once Scratch the Cat interacts with our hedgehog, um, then we're going to make this dance floor show up. Um, and it's going to be phenomenal. So uh, what I did is I went to backdrops here. So I clicked on my uh, backdrop section over here. And then I clicked on the backdrops tab and I selected backdrop one, which was just the plain backdrop with nothing, uh, uh, nothing exciting going on. So, um, all right, let's go back to our code. And now I wanna say, we'll go back to our hedgehog. So if our hedgehog is touching sprite one, so that's the name of our scratch the cat sprite right here, then we want to change the backdrop. So the backdrop is, um, that has to do with the way that it looks. So we're going to look in looks, um, and we're going to see what we can find. So we have say, think, costumes, there we go. Switch backdrop to spotlight. All right. So that is exactly what we want to do. Um, and we can see that our if has these little like, notches cut out. All right. So that indicates that, uh, this probably fits into another, um, uh, another block. So this is something that we need our hedgehog to continually check, uh, which means that we want to go to control and we want to get a, um, we want a forever block. So we need to go into events and our very first event is our when green uh, green flag is clicked. So what's great about this is now see how just visually it looks complete. Uh, that's a really good indicator uh, that they have you know they have designed it this way so that it looks complete 
when your code is ready to run. So we don't see anything here where something else would kind of hook into our code. Um, it's It looks nice and complete. Uh, and now I think that this is going to work very nicely. All right, so let's stop it and let's run it and let's see what happens. Look at that, we have a dance party, okay? So, uh, so we're gonna stop here. I'm not gonna add any more stuff. Um, I think that uh, I think that we succeeded in making Scratch the Cat do something surprising. That was our goal today. Um, I would love to see what you came up with. All right, so if you followed along um, and you kind of created what I created here, um, I would love to see what you can build on that, right? So there's lots of stuff that we can do here. Lots of things that we didn't even like scratch the surface of. See what I did there? Scratch the surface. Mm -hmm. uh, so we could add sound, right? We could have other sprites pop up when we get to the dance party. So I imagine that, you know, this hedgehog may be very popular, right? This hedgehog may have lots of friends um, that want to join this party. So we could add lots of other sprites, have them pop up. Um, I would love to see what you can figure out uh, to build on this because there is just an infinite number of ways to, uh, to improve this and, uh, and make it more interesting. So finally, what I would encourage you to do after you're finished creating something is to stop and do a reflection. All right, so we know that one of our words that we learned at the beginning is reflection prompt. All right, um, so we like to think, we like to stop and think about um, what went well, all right, what might be kind of confusing that we could change up a little bit, and uh, what's something that I don't like that I want to fix later on, all right? So I'm gonna start with what I would like to fix. Uh, so I would like to, um, I would like to, so see how Scratch the Cat is behind the hedgehog? I think it would make more sense since we are, uh, since we're controlling Scratch the Cat, I think it would make more sense for Scratch to be um, on, like, on top of that sprite rather than behind it. Um, so I would like to figure out how to make that happen. So that would be my, um, that would be my red, you know, what, what do I need to fix? reflection. Uh, for yellow, what would I like to, um, what would I like to add to it? I would love to add music. Um, you could actually record your own music in this. Uh, if you go to sounds, you'll see that um, one of the options is actually to record sounds, which is cool. Um, so I would really like to add music. That's what I would like to, um, to add on to this. And then as for my, uh, so that's my yellow. That's the yellow part of my reflection. Next up is the green part of my reflection, which is uh, what do I really like about it? So I like that uh, we got this really cool backdrop. All right. We got a, a really ha a hot party going on. Um, and I like that uh, we were able to get creative and, uh, and think creatively, um, problem solve creatively throughout this process. So I like that we figured out how to make something happen when Scratch the Cat um, coincides or conf uh, to, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Collides. There it is. When Scratch the Cat collides with the hedgehog, um, it's cool that we were able to figure out how to make stuff happen. All right. So that's something I'm really proud of with this project. So um, here's what I would like for you to do. I would like for you to uh, to create your own thing or add on to this one. Um, I will include a link to this on CodeCrew.tv so that you can remix this on your own um, your own account and add your own stuff to it if you would like. Uh, and then I would really love it if you did your own reflection. So think about uh, you know what didn't go so well. Uh, what could you change? And then what are you really, really proud of? All right. All three of those things are super important to think about after you have accomplished something. So uh, so we are going to wrap up our exploration with Scratch the Cat and we are going to move on to an unplugged activity. 
that is going to be presented to us by um, Martarius and Ladarius, who are also um, TAs here at Code Crew. So I'm going to hand this over to them. Hello. It's me, Martarius Smith, and my friend here, Ladarius Richardson. Hello, everybody. How are you? I hope you're doing good this time that we're living in. Nice. And he here is going to teach you about binary numbers better than I can. He's even going to teach me. And at the end of it, we're going to go through a couple of examples, see if we can get it down, and I guess show you guys how you can do it. So take it away, Ladarius. All right. Thanks, Martarius. So hello, everybody. This might seem a little bit challenging at first but I promise you it's easy it's very easy in the example on the bottom left we can use this to show you how to count in binary the numbers at the bottom represent if the numbers are activated or deactivated this is what I was talking about earlier when I was speaking about how computers can only speak in ones and zeros this is basically what the computer sees but these, these represent something in this specific order, going from right to left. This one represents something, this zero represents something, and this zero represents something, and this one represents something, and this zero represents something. The thing about binary is the numbers don't change. So when we count in this order from right to left, this first digit is equal to one which is represented by this card up here. This number is activated because one means that the card is activated. For our second example, it would be two, which is the second digit. And the second digit is zero, so we won't count it. But the reason we do look at this is because this does represent a number and the computer has to know if it is going to count the number or if it's not going to count the number. An easy way to know what numbers come next is to get the number that you already have, for example 2, and add it by itself, which is going to give us our third digit, represented by 0. So going back to me talking about adding the digits together to give you your the next number this two that we had already we're going to add it by itself so now we have four and that's what this zero at the bottom represents it's not activated so we won't count it and next we have eight which is represented by the one at the bottom so the one at the bottom means that it's activated, so we'll count this card. And right now I want you to stop and look at what we have already. So far the only cards that we see activated are 1 and 8. So keep that in mind. Here's our next digit, which is 0, represented by the cards at the top which is equal to 16. And that's going back on, that's showing you another example of our previous number, eight, being added by itself to give you the next number. It's not activated, so we will not count it because the computer would not read it. So let's add our numbers that are counted, eight plus one. And you'll see we already have our answer down here, nine. Now me and my friend Martarius are going to go over a couple of examples to give you a better understanding of it because this is a tricky topic. Don't feel discouraged. So as I can tell by the first example, I see three of them activated. So of course I'm going to count those with the first one being one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Second one, 9, 10, 11, 12. 
then the third one 13 so that's a total of 13 Now, for the second example, I only see two of them activated. Two of them. Very similar to the first one, only being that the last one isn't activated. So, of course, we're not going to count that one. And, as you can see, it's a total of 12 on this one, since one was taken away. So, that one is 12. And those are examples of how you can do binary. And you can do this at home, it's easy. You can get cards, cut them out, and use them that way. Or you could even just write down your individual blocks on a piece of paper. Or even on your computer like I am. That is uh, true. I hope you enjoyed, and me and Martirius will see you next time. Goodbye. Take care. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Code Crew TV. We are so happy to share this with you. Um, you can find all of the links and resources that you need uh, for today's episode on our website, which is codecrew.tv. Um, and we are looking forward to hearing from you on our social media, which you can find links to that on codecrew.tv as well. Um, I hope you all have a great day. And in the next episode, we have even more exciting stuff planned for you. So thank you so much.